guys and welcome to the draft network youtube channel we have a lot of different things that we're experimenting with with this youtube channel from posting mock drafts to podcast episodes to jersey swaps there's so many different things that we're doing in this youtube channel but something new that we're going to start is i'm going to get on camera a little bit and just have some instant reactions to some things that are going on in the nfl landscape and obviously the draft industry as a whole so some news came out that North Dakota State was going to host a game against Central Arkansas on October 3rd at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. I said the whole thing just because so many people are looking forward to it with North Dakota State, a team that has had the most success of any FCS program over the last decade or so. But there's a different buzz about them this year just because they have a top quarterback draft. They have a top quarterback prospect in Trey Lance, and they've had plenty before with Carson Wentz and a lot of others that have come out of that school before. But Trey Lance is a little bit different just because he already is receiving some preseason hype just because we, he had a freshman season unlike we've ever seen before. He went 16-0 and as a starter, but he did not have an interception at all. 42 total touchdowns, 28 passing touchdowns, 14 rushing touchdowns. So he was a bit of an anomaly as far as freshman seasons that we've seen from quarterbacks at those ranks. And quarterbacks usually tend they tend to struggle during their earlier years but Trey Lance he did not have many periods of struggles if any at all throughout his redshirt freshman season so with what makes this a little bit different is that they've already canceled their season but North Dakota State with the pride that they have and then the illustrious program and success that they have had over the past few seasons they want to figure out a way to play just because that's what the school pride is all about that's what the really the school really revolves around is the football program and that's pretty much all that they have there. That's the pride that they have in that organization, or excuse me, that program. It's just the football program just because of the success that they have experienced over the last decade. So with Trey Lance, what makes this decision so interesting is that, and a lot of people are criticizing him just because there's a lot of people saying he should have ended the transfer portal. He should have transferred elsewhere, whether that's the SEC, the ACC, or some of these other conferences that are playing just because we want to have a recent tape of him. And my biggest gripe with Trey Lance has always been we really haven't seen him face any type of adversity. So if he was able to transfer to the SEC or the ACC, a lot of people were saying that it could be a Jamie Newman type route of where he would experience some type of adversity. But with Trey Lance, I don't necessarily think it's a case of that. I just think it's a little bit different in that they're just playing one game this year. So that's something that is going to be very critical for him just because everybody likes to dive into the most recent tape or your latest tape is your best tape. That really is a scout saying of what a lot of people think of some prospects. We're going to evaluate you by the latest that we have seen from you. And this was kind of the dilemma with Jordan Love, who I think Trey Lance is in a very, very similar situation within. And what I mean by that is in 2018, there was a lot of hype with Jordan Love coming into the year. I believe it was 32 touchdowns and six interceptions that he had with Utah State, but they lost their head coach, Matt Wells, to Texas Tech, and they lost a lot of personnel. He lost a couple of his top receivers and also his top tight end and some offensive linemen. So his production slipped his final year. I believe it was 20 touchdowns and 17 interceptions that he finished with during his final season at Utah State. And I say Trey Lance is in a similar situation because he enters this season with a lot of hype now that he is draft eligible. A lot of people are looking forward to what he can do this year. And obviously he's not going to be able to perform that, but just in this one game, and they're already labeling it as a showcase game. And I think it is exactly that. I think what is a slippery slope for Trey Lance with this game is that a lot of people are going to try to predicate your draft outlook on this one game. And I think that's kind of unfair to him just because I think sample size is huge when it comes to the draft process. And I went back and forth on if he should play this year, if he should not play this year. And I'm of the belief that he shouldn't play this year but I think a big reason why Trey wants to go out there is that he's a competitor and I think that's one of the biggest things that I love about him and that you don't just see it as a passer but you see it as a runner and I think he needs to get a little bit down more as far as sliding and protecting his body but you see him as an ultimate competitor and it takes a lot for a player to come in as a redshirt freshman to come in and not only win the starting job but also go out and have the success that he had going 16-0, and 0, I think that's just monumental for his draft prospect status as far as he's a true winner. He's an ultimate competitor, and I think that's one of the biggest reasons why he wants to go out and show what he can do in that game. And I think another reason is just have recent tape out there. And I know this is just one game, and it's not a big-time opponent, and unfortunately we're not going to be able to see him against Oregon, which was going to be the season opener for, for the Bison. But 
Also, North Carolina a and I think that was going to be a big game for him as well, just because that's always a program that is always near the top of the FCS rankings. But Central Arkansas, they have a very good defense. I think they're one of the better teams uh, in the FCS ranks as well. So I think this is a big-time game for him. But unfortunately, it isn't to the magnitude of Oregon or some of the other opponents that they had originally scheduled on their original schedule before the conference ended up ultimately making the decision of canceling the season. So I think this is a huge slippery slope with them. And it's going to be very risky for Trey Lance just because so many things can happen. And anytime you take the football field, there's the risk of injury happening. But if he goes out and he he has an outlier game of, let's say he goes out and throws three or four interceptions, that's not to say he's going to do that, but just using it as an example, there's going to be so much criticism about him and we're not going to be able to see him. And I think this happened with a lot of different prospects going back to last year is that everybody has a lasting memory of what your last game was. And I always like to use the example of AJ Terrell, which was the cornerback from Clemson of where he didn't play very well in a national championship game against LSU. And a lot of people unfairly knocked him for that just because LSU, they lit up everybody and not only just Clemson in a national championship game, but it was an aerial assault week in and week out. And AJ Terrell was just the latest victim of that. But prior to that point, He played really well. So circling back to Trey Lance, if he doesn't play well in this game against Central Arkansas, I think there's going to be a situation of where recency bias sets in and that a lot of people are really not going to have a lasting image of him if he doesn't play well in this game. Now, if he goes out and plays really well in this game, I think everything will stay par for the course as far as his draft prospect status and then where he sits right now. I think he firmly sits as a top 15 selection, but we know quarterbacks get pushed up the board every single year. So if he goes out and he crushes it, in this game, just like how he did during his redshirt freshman season. I think there's a situation where we could hear top five to top 10 talk. I think a lot of people have him in that fair range of quarterback two to quarterback three, uh, right behind Trevor Lawrence. And then some people have him behind Justin Fields. So I think there's a situation of where he goes and he plays in this game and he plays really well. We can now see him enter that quarterback two conversation alongside Justin Fields or however anybody has their quarterback rankings right now. But there's a lot of risk associated with it. So it is a very slippery slope. So that just gives you guys a basic guys idea. Uh, that just gives you guys a basic idea of what I'm going to do on this YouTube channel. I'm excited to give my instant reactions on a lot of things. And this is something that I'm going to make a regular from here on out. So excited about that. Remember to subscribe to the Draft Network YouTube channel. Once again, I'm your host, Jordan Reed. This was a blast. I love having instant reactions to a lot of things just because there's so many different things going on in the landscape of college football right now.